acuity. Um, some other some other sort of minor points, um, sort of miscellaneous things. Um, booleans in this kind of language are useless. Um, you have a, typically a type that looks like this. It's, it's deck for decidable deck of any any statement because a, a type is a statement, a logical statement, is um, two constructors, one that the statement is true and the other one that the statement is not true. And so this, anywhere you'd use a bool in, in most programming languages, you'd probably want to be using one of these in Agda because it gives you it gives you knowledge. Pattern matching on it gives you, gives you the proof of the statement being true. Um, relations are often defined inductively or possible to define inductively. Um, things like less than on naturals. Um, you could write it as a function and say, well, zero is less than, less than anything, or um, you know, uh, define it recursively as a function um, with true and false, maybe the empty type and the, and the unit type or something. Um, this is a lot more convenient to work with in Agda or any language that really supports inductive families. It's, um, this is basically a constructor that says zero is less than anything. For, for all n, zero is less than n. And successor saying, well, for all m and n, if I know that m is less than n, then I know that the n plus one is less than n plus one. Um, and again, this kind of statement, this is a relation on the naturals, um, very closely resembles the structure of the naturals underlying it. I mean, it's almost identical, actually. That you have a, a nullary constructor for zero, and you have a unary constructor for one. It just happens to have a lot more fancier, fancier type of machinery going on there. And so, uh, one of these less than proofs is basically identical to the smaller number, the left hand argument, um, at runtime. You have you have like ten constructors for for like the number nine is natural. You have ten constructors for saying nine is less than anything. Um, and um, yeah, as I said, there are ways you can work with that. Um, many proofs are a pain. Um, I showed you some very simple ones. In practice, you're going to be proving things about about a, a fancier, more interesting function than just addition. Um, and they can get really ugly. Um, there are a few things you can do to alleviate um, this. Um, if you encode invariants, as I showed in, in the type indices, um, if you're working on data structures and you can encode invariants in them, you can bring those up during your proof and um, save yourself a lot of work. And so while, by encoding the invariants and the types, you prevent yourself, you, you sort of constrain yourself to writing mostly correct code as, as you go along. And so those can be brought up later on as proof of, of your algorithm being always correct and you might only need to fill in a few blanks. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot easier when you can actually adapt your algorithm. So if you're just saying, okay, well I wrote this thousand line program in Haskell um, and I'm gonna just um, translate it to Agda and prove that it's correct. Um, that is usually not gonna work um, or you're gonna have a very hard time with it. Um, if you wrote the algorithm sort of as I if with invariants, um, and you sort of kept in mind that you needed to be proving stuff about it later, it makes things a lot easier usually. And um, yeah, so so in, in general, you'd want to really be proving and programming things at more or less the same time. You may, you make small units of um, that are small units of algorithms, and you prove things at the same time or roughly the same time about them. Um, and certified programming, that is, these proving and programming can actually be very fun. I, I've gotten addicted to it several times because it's basically a puzzle in which you can have the machine check for you, but you can specify yourself. So you can say, well, I'm going to take an arbitrary mathematical statement that I know to be true, I'm going to state it and see if I can prove it. Um, and it's a puzzle game. You have these holes, you need to fill them, you need to define, define maybe helper functions or lemmas, whatever you want to call them. Um, and this has been observed by several people. I think Benjamin Pierce made a sort of, um, lambda the ultimate TA or something like that, and he was talking about <laughs> how um, how this this kind of proof, in his case in Koch, um, this kind of proof can actually be quite addictive for many people. Baron Dreck calls it a video game. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, just like if, if, if you need like you yeah. know, the thing that goes back to Gensen or whatever, Baron Dreck thought it was like a video okay. game. Okay, yeah, that's great. Is it interactive? Hmm? Yeah, yeah it's, sort it's of. interactive. Well, uh, I, I can show you uh, quickly what, what the actual Agda looks like, but um, just, uh, just to go, um, actually I can just bring that up right now. Um, I've got this, uh, this is Emacs. Um, Emacs is the only supported way of using it, um, <laughs> unfortunately for some people, but um, I can write F, um, I don't know, let's, uh, I've got a bool set, or 
true bool false. No, it's not bool. a good environment. And f is bool bool f. I don't know. I can I can write something like this. And so I loaded the, the file and I've got this magic hole here. And um, I can I can ask for the context in this hole and say I I need a bool and I've got a bool. The bool I got is the x and I need to produce another one. And so I can for example, ask it to automatically expand my patterns for me. I can, um, that will, you know, do all the patterns on, on a specific variable for me. Um, and I can, I can even ask it to make, to make some guesses at things. I can ask it to um, write that for me. Um, and it just, yeah, it, it wasn't very interesting in that case. But I, like this, I like this algorithm. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm constructor one. Sorry? Like, this is the same sort of yeah. Jim yeah. actually tries very hard to use all of your arguments, yeah. whereas this guy uh, Agda doesn't think. care. <laughs> yeah, but this guy, but the Agda one is, is smarter and can actually use the dependent types as well, yeah. uh, whereas Jim doesn't have that. Um, but anyway, just uh, going back up to the conclusion, I guess, um, we have um, some experimental features uh, that are making their way into Agda um, are universe polymorphism. Um, in, uh, in uh, Haskell, we have two levels of universes. We have types and kinds, and just don't ask what what this, the type of the kind is. Um, in Agda, you have you have an infinite tower of these guys, um, and you have an infinite tower because otherwise you run into sort of um, being able to prove false and prove false in fancy ways um, that uh, you generally you generally don't want to be able to prove false in any of these systems. Um, it does actually happen in Agda more than a lot of people would like. Um, what? Yeah, you're able to. Um, Recently, well, about a year ago, I think, on the Agda mailing list, Dan Dole um, mentioned that he was able to prove that all functions are injective, um, which is, uh, you know, generally not, not <laughs> about that. Um, and not about, the functions he thought we was working with. Yeah. Um, the one of the uh, um, one of the reasons you have an infinite tower of universes is simply because if you had a single, um, if you had, say, the type of the type of types is the type itself. Um, you run into things similar to like um, Russell's paradox, Hochschirach's paradox, yeah. um, and other similar ways of proving false in strange ways. You know, like, do it wrong. Yeah. Um, and so universe probably polymorphism is taking the taking the infinite tower of types and actually letting you specify that as a parameter. So I can write an algorithm which works on any universe level. It can work on the type level, it can work on the kind level, it can work anywhere you want. There was a fun bug for a while there where the, the indexes on universes were in were ints, were actual like thirty two bit ints. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> you could actually, so you could you could actually uh, check the fact that um, you know set zero was a member of set you know uh, set max int. Which is a member of set mac, uh, min int, which is a member of set zero. So you can get back to uh, Gerard's paradox. Well done. <laughs> through uh, the fact that the universes weren't infinite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 640,000 universes ought to be enough for yeah. everyone. Um, so then you also have uh, another more recently added thing is irrelevance, which takes us back closer to uh, yeah. what Koch has with, um, with the sort of separation of between um, propositions and types. And um, it basically you know, doesn't have enough problems with irrelevance. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> da, 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 da. It um, it allows you to say that, that certain parameters cannot be used um, for computational stuff, um, and it allows Agda to quickly throw them away and use less memory because it actually uses a hell of a lot of memory as on the line. Um, like uh, so people have been working on various formalizations of category theory in Agda, um, yeah. and uh, people tend to do that a lot, and um, um, there have been several attempts, and they usually fall, uh, fail around monoidal categories, um, which are <laughs> fairly simple to define, but they tend to use about two or three gigs of RAM when type checking, and a lot of people don't have that kind of RAM, so um, that's been a usual um, issue. And irrelevance will help with that, or help has helped with it a bit. Reflection um, is uh, is an even new um, experimental feature, which basically says, well, you, you look at those holes that I was using before. Basically, take the goal type of one of those holes and um, reify it as an Agda term, and then you can say, well, with this term, I'm going to write an abstract prover of, of, of a certain class of problems, um, which I can then say, well, take this hole and apply this prover to it. And the since it's written in Agda, you can actually, unlike Cox tactic language, for example, which um, which is a sort of separate language, which allows you to say, well, what is the type of this, and, and what can I do? Um, this is within Agda, so I can actually prove things about the provers. And so I can say, well, I have a prover for 
one thing that's being worked on right now is a prover for Pressburger arithmetic, which is a very restricted form of arithmetic that's um, automatically provable. Um, and um, you can write a prover in Agda for Pressburger arithmetic, and you can prove that it proves all statements about the, the Pressburger arithmetic that can work with. Um, and that's a step further than what uh, Koch can do because you have this LTAC, which is a language which is completely destroyed and it's not, Koch doesn't know about it. It's just producing Koch terms that, um, that uh, now whether that's actually useful or not is another question and it's, uh, it's quite hard. <laughs> well, to I mean, if you work at it for a while, you may eventually get up to the level of technology they had with LCF. L uh, I don't know. It's the first prover in this family. Okay. What they did was they invented ML and yeah. said, hey, you can write your own tactics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, everybody remembers ML, but nobody uses yeah. it. <laughs> well, I mean, all, all of these logics are just like LCF, yeah. but, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah. Also, a lot of systems that have reflection currently, a lot of proof systems, uh, usually the reflection algorithm is written in some other language, maybe like C or ML or whatever. And it's more or less just asserted that this other program works because proving these things is.